very tense for the first few seconds when it is lying motionless. You really look and see if there's a breath. At 6.50 a.m., Orla gives birth to a 70 kilo baby. The mother will start to groom the calf, just cleaning it up, really, and that kind of stimulates the, the breathing. The other giraffes, they're all very interested. It's like bringing your child home for the first time. They're all there. They all want to see it. They all want to be the first one to touch it. After just 10 minutes, the newborn makes its first attempt to stand up. And the first keepers are arriving at the zoo, having heard news of Orla's new arrival. We've got a baby. Yay! It's just being groomed by Mum now. Orla's calf is an hour and a quarter old. Giraffe House is being closed to the public so that mother and baby can spend the vital first few days together. The baby giraffe has yet to take its first steps. After an hour or so, or even less, they could start trying to stand, and that is quite funny to watch. And also, hearts in your mouth, because uh, they take a couple of tumbles as well, just getting used to their little legs. painful to watch. I love the instinct. It's amazing, isn't it? Giraffes do stand up really quick when they're born. They need to stand up to be able to reach the udder. Only an hour and a half after it was born, the new giraffe is standing up and beginning to suckle from its mother. Once it's up standing and suckling, then it's happy days for us. How yeah. do they know that stuff? I don't know. If I could um, find out a way of um, talking to a giraffe, I'd, uh, I'd let you know. <laughs> Kidepo is now almost two weeks old. Today he will meet the rest of his family when he's released into the outdoor enclosure for the first time. The keeper's main concern is how Meru will react to his new baby, as bull giraffes can be aggressive to other males, whatever their size. Little Kadepo stands his ground. Miru, why are you being a pain? He bashed his own head. Yeah. After five minutes, Orla goes to look for Kadepo. Good girl, Orla. That's right. You know what to do. 
she's coming to find him, which is really good. So it just shows how she's protective and doing what a good mum should do, really. And Kadepo has taken his first steps to being accepted by his father. It's 7 a.m. And Chester hasn't yet opened its doors. But Babs has come in early to check on Florence, one of the pregnant zebras. Happy days. It's so cute. <laughs> the foal is only two hours old. And Babs hasn't seen it stand up yet. In the wild, newborns are easy targets for predators. It's the most important thing. Get up, get moving, get eating. Survival 101. The longer you spend time on floor, the more vulnerable you are. Mums will kick or she will nudge or they will like squeeze a little bit like, come on, you need to get going. I'm gonna can look really harsh, but it is important. And it's instinct, instinct kicks in. A foal is the best thing in the world. Honestly, they are all legs. Their heads are the smallest thing in the world. Their bum doesn't even fit their body. Their tail is just this little stick with hair on. Their stripes are all sort of meddled in with each other. All the fur is all ruffled. And, oh, they're so cute, they're so cute. The foal may be up and about, but it's not out of danger yet. It takes baby zebras a few days to recognize their mother as their own. So for the next 72 hours, Florence will be fiercely protective. Even around the two other members of the herd. It's 9 p.m. At the Eastern Black Rhino Paddock, 11-year-old Zuri has gone into labour. A rhino birth can take up to 12 hours. And both mother and calf face many dangers. There's a whole multitude of different things that could potentially go wrong. So that kind of adds to our anxiety. Zuri has been in labour for two hours, and the calf's head is crowning. It's a crucial stage of the birth. The calf could get stuck. Zuri might not be able to pass it successfully. She could have a stillborn calf. Zuri almost sits on her partially born baby but finds the strength to get to her feet again. Finally, at 12.03 a.m., Zuri gives birth to a baby boy. faces an immediate fight for life. It's very critical that the calf stands up and is walking about um, quite quickly and gets a feed from mum. And the reason for that is that mum's initial milk isn't milk, it's actually colostrum, which contains all different antibiotics. He must feed, but Zuri's calf is struggling. If the calf doesn't suckle and get that colostrum, straight away like it should do, it could end up with quite a sickly animal. 
Zuri gets down next to her newborn and gently encourages him to his feet. It doesn't really matter how they get them up and standing. They just need to get up and they find a way that works for them. I suppose they don't really have health and safety guidelines and they don't have baby books either. Zuri's calf attempts to suckle for the first time. For now, he's safe. But bringing up a young animal at the zoo poses its own challenges. We have to make sure that they remain wild as much as possible, but also we need to start teaching them how to cope in the environment we created for them. Just living in the enclosure um, happily and living with us looking after them. At the Eastern Black Rhino Paddock, it's two months since baby Ike was born. So far, Mum and Calf have bonded really well. He's feeding, he's following her around, she's really attentive, because she is such a calm, relaxed animal. Hopefully her calf will just follow suit with her. But unlike his confident mother, Zuri, Ike is a little timid. Ike kind of relies on mummy an, an awful lot. He's almost a little bit like a little boy scout, like, but mummy said I couldn't do this, so I'm not doing it. I don't think any of us expect a serious calf to be as scaredy cat as he is. The zoo tries to ensure that all their animals have a life as close to being in the wild as possible, and human contact is limited. But keepers are planning a unique training programme to get the baby rhinos at Chester used to human touch, so they'll be easier to care for in adulthood. They weigh 200 kilos very, very quickly, and there's no way they will stand still. Meet Styx and her partner, Kai. They're quite unusual, really. They're not in many zoos, and a lot of people haven't heard of what a padamelon is. Sort of like small miniature wallabies, really, really big ears, really strong hind legs, and kind of a short, stumpy tail for balance. Standing just 20 inches off the ground, padamelons are part of the kangaroo family. They are nicknamed just... Kai, Shy Kai. When he arrived, he was a little bit of a quieter character. Kai didn't really know what to do, really. It took him a while but Shai Kai finally found his mojo. They've come together, kind of had kind of a whole day of passion. <laughs> so Kai's not what we call a proven male. He's never been with a female before. Same thing for her, she's a very young female. You've seen the matings, but the matings don't always result in babies. Baby padamelons, or joeys, develop and grow inside their mother's pouch for up to six months. So even if Styx is pregnant, it could be a while before keepers glimpse any sign of a newborn. Sometimes I actually sat at a really weird angle and I'm like, can I see a foot? I'm like, no, you can't see a foot. For us to have successful breeding, it would be a massive tick for us, but it could take them a couple of years we could need them to be a little bit more mature before we see any youngsters, so it is kind of a waiting game for us. It's been two months since the team first spotted movement in Dusky Padamelon Styx's pouch. This is looking ready to burst at the moment. She is humongous, bless her. She's looking like, a bit like a beach ball. Joey has been developing and growing, hidden away, for over six months. Seeing the Joey for the first time 
was one of the most exciting things like I've ever seen in my in my whole zoo career, I would say definitely. It's proper like miniature of her. Um, it's just perfect. It is the first one bred at Chester Zoo. And just to be involved in that, like I feel really, really lucky, like really lucky. It's difficult to predict when exactly it will leave the pouch because it's nice and safe and it's getting all the milk it wants. It's got a cushy life, really. But just a few hours later, away from the public gaze, the youngster finally takes its first tentative steps outside the safety of mum's pouch. It's a really big thing for it to actually come out of the pouch. To them, it's a big, wide open space that they've only ever seen from a pouch. So it can be quite vulnerable for them, definitely, yeah. No one knows quite how dad, Kai, will react. Kai, in some ways, does look a little bit nervous around the baby. He didn't really know what to make of it. Sticks kind of surprised us a little bit because she she's this little, tiny little animal and she was quite overprotective of it, really. The Joey appears spooked by Dad and beats a hasty retreat. Never seen any aggression between Kai and Sticks. You bring in a, another animal into, into the equation, Will he understand? In some ways, it's hard to take a step back and go, yeah, we'll, we'll leave her to it. But you just have to trust that they've got that maternal instinct and the baby's going to be fine. The Highway family are the jewel in the crown of Chester's breeding programme. Three generations of Asian elephants, most of whom were born at the zoo. Come on, buddy, let's go. For most of the last year, the only youngster in the herd has been Nandita. But it's all changed for Nandita, as a new baby was born in the herd a few days ago. It's so important for the, for the Highway family to, to have more calves, um, to, to build that family unit. You know, we need more sisters and cousins and aunties. That, that's how elephants naturally live, so, you know, without that, they're not kind of fulfilling that role as elephants. Her big sister, Sitami, is expecting. So at the minute, we're going through an amazing period of time. Usually you have to wait 22 months for these things to happen, and we've got two coming along in a space of four to five weeks, so, you know, we're over the moon at the moment. 10 p.m. in the elephant house. The herd are restless. Nandita's big sister, Sitami, is behaving strangely, showing signs of discomfort. It's hard to know whether the elephants kind of sense that, that something's happening. They, they are quite intuitive animals, so they kind of often seem to know when something's happening. The new babies come two weeks early. I mean, it was a little bit of a shock. We knew that she was coming into the birth window. Her levels dropped. The lab told us that levels had dropped. So we then know that the baby or the mother's body is getting ready to drop the baby. Um, but it came right at the start of it. I mean, as soon as the baby's born, um, what actually happens is that the mother will has to stimulate the calf to get it onto its feet and to, to check it's OK and to, and to get the sack off. It looks a bit harsh sometimes, it's, a little, it's not that bad. I mean, that's a wild thing, you know, in the wild, the baby needs to be moving with the herd very, very quickly. So that's a stimulation thing to get the baby going. 
For Nandita, there's now not just one baby around, but two. And what certainly what, what we're looking for from Nandita now is for her to, you know, to, to start looking after these babies and start to practice her, her, her maternal behaviour, you know, and, and as well as playing with them, she really needs to step up to the plate a little bit and start developing as, as a proper young elephant. It's now 12 hours since the new baby elephant was born. Hey, little one. How are we doing? They're going to call him Ayu. I've never seen something so precious in all my life. Nandita has left the older baby in Dali to her own devices. Transferring her attention to the new arrival. Perfecting new techniques to get to him past the grown-ups. Tai and Satami are glued together now around this calf, and the same thing's happened again. She's testing the boundaries. She's seeing what she can get away with. Um, and for her, that, that usually means kicking the baby in the head. No harm's done. 